Hello, welcome to today's IG Live. I have been a little bit anxious about today because we haven't been live in, I think, weeks. It's been a beautiful summer and now we're back at it. So today I'm very excited to be joined by our guest, Kat Cantrell. And I met Kat last fall. We were in San Jose, California together at um, a Love MBA put on by Rachel Greenwald who is an esteemed matchmaker in the world. And I connected with Kat, Maya, who's on our, my team. Maya and I met Kat and we both just, just adore her. And she is the real deal. So she's a matchmaker, a dating coach. She helps people with um, dating, sty she's a dating stylist. She's got an excellent podcast. And today we are going to go through all of your questions around dating, matchmaking. What what questions do you want to ask? Because you've got you've got access to this excellent dating coach and matchmaker for the next 30 minutes. So I'm going to ask Kat to join. And those of you that are joining us, thank you for being here. Hi Rachel, I see you. you I met you at the Love and Be as well. Hi, sweetie. If you've got questions for Kat, I want you to ask them. Please do. Okay, ask her, please. Okay, here we go. Here we are. I can't. Oh, no. <laughs> it worked. We did it. We did it. We did do it. We did. Hi. Oh, Hi, Rachel. Thank I see Rachel. Thank you for thank you so much for being with us. And of course. We, we've already been joined by um, some of our dear friends that are in the matchmaking no. and love business. Yay, yay, yay. 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 All right. So we've got so many questions to go through. And I tell you, the time goes by. The minutes go by so fast. And we only they have do. 29 left. So let's do okay. this. I'm all right. All about it. And, and those of you that are with us live, put your questions for Kat in the chat, yes. please. And in the show notes, I'll make sure I include Kat's websites. And so you can reach out to her if you, if you want her help in dating, coaching, or matchmaking. Of course. Okay. So this is, this is a good question. How can I communicate my relationship goals and intentions without scaring off a potential partner? Okay, so I think that one of the important things to kind of listen to is how that question is phrased, which is if you are in fear of scaring someone away due to what your needs or your goals or your aspirations are for the relationship, I think that that's something just to kind of keep in mind. Like, is this somebody in which that I feel comfortable enough to be able to share my needs with? And I think that, you know, a lot of people do struggle with that, especially those that are more anxiously attached. But my, what I always tell people, especially in matchmaking, you know, cause we make matches. And then one of the things that I love to do is watch that relationship kind of flourish. And one of the conversations I have a lot is let's have that conversation about being exclusive about, you know, where is this going? And you don't have to come out and say, do you want to be my boyfriend or be my girlfriend or, you know, so what you can say is I really love spending time with you and I really love spending time only with you. And my goal for this relationship is like, I kind of, I see us having a future you know, how are you feeling about this connection and where do you see this going? And I think it's okay to mm -hmm. be the person to make that, to make that call, to sit down mm -hmm. and have that conversation of, because if you're both dating with intent, you're both dating for hopefully for that long-term relationship, then most likely that other person is already waiting, is sitting and waiting mm -hmm. and ready to have that conversation. It's a very vulnerable conversation and it's always difficult. Like who's going to say it? And if I say it, am I going to, are they going to push me away? And if they do push you away, then you're, you're getting your answer. Right. Right. Mm, good. Very good advice. Yes. What is the best way to start a conversation on a dating app without sounding generic? This is good, right? Rather than, I mean, yeah. I was on my dating before I met my partner, it's like the, the classics. Hi, yeah, that's not that's not cutting it. No, no, there needs to be way more effort. <laughs> and you, it's way more effort. And um, I think you. So when we talk about connection, 
we, in order to feel connected, we need to have an emotion, like some type of emotional response, right? And so the way for a person to feel emotional about somebody is that feeling that they're, they're feeling seen and they're feeling heard. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you go to reach out to them, a generic hi or hey beautiful or I love whatever um, is not, not making them feel special or unique or different. It's a lot of the conversation, a lot of the complaints that I get from people is that there's a lot of cut and paste, right? So cut yes. and paste and cut and paste. So make the question, ask them a question about their profile. So it's yes. not a statement, ask the question where if the profile is them hiking, you know, on a mountain and you can ask the question, hey, is this the trail over at whatever such in place? Or can you tell me like, what is the best trail to go hiking on here and wherever you live? Make it to where you can ask the question about their prompt or make, ask them even a more like in-depth you know, question about them in general, depending on the prompt, but you always respond to the prompt. Then the person goes, oh my gosh, they read my profile. Right. They're actually interested. It's not a cut and paste and they're making it about me. Right. So yeah, so I'm gonna give you an example of something that I did with my boyfriend. Okay. This is how it all started because we were online yeah. and he shared that one of the prompts was, what do you, how do you start your day? And his answer to that prompt was, I every, wake up every morning, I love to do um, like swim and go in the sauna and hot tub after. And it's a great way to, to start my day. And I thought, well, that's very unique. Like, I don't know yes. a lot of people that wake up in the morning and go swimming. Right. And so I, res and I, so I responded and I said, um, like, this is, that sounds like just such a, a different and very healthy way to start your day, like refreshing or something like that. What pool do you swim at? Like it was a, it was like commenting, and because I was interested, and then you know, and then it, that's how we started our conversation. So yep. that's just an example of, right? Such a great commenting example, on Brock. somebody's somebody's um, on somebody's profile, and I was genuinely interested. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. That's right. All right. What are some effective ways to set healthy boundaries in the early stages of dating? So. I think some healthy, effective ways could be, for example, if you are online dating, setting those boundaries with correspondence. And I know that there, I know that everyone feels that they have to be on call when you are starting to have communication or you are starting to text somebody within, within the app, but to set the boundaries first initially with the app. So, because how we start the relationship is really important, like how we initially start that conversation. So one of the things is that if we are not familiar of how to start setting the boundaries, as we're dating, paying attention to ourselves of what makes you feel uncomfortable. Because if something doesn't feel right with you, then that means mm -hmm. most likely that there needs to be a boundary in place mm -hmm. for that particular thing. And that could be whatever it is. And I think that people are so afraid again that setting those boundaries is going to push someone away, but actually it's quite the opposite. If you have boundaries within your own life and what feels good to you and what's like, what makes you, because you're the only one who really knows what those boundaries are. If you set that, that boundary and that person respects it, then you go, oh wow. And the person will respect you because you have the boundary. If you have a boundary yes. and that person pushes it, then that's most likely not going to be a good match for you. So I think with intent, setting the boundary, and it can start off with something very small, which is, I'm not gonna text after 10 o'clock at night, right? Who's, you should not be having to text people at 12, one, two o'clock in the morning, um, especially complete strangers or people that you really don't know. Setting that boundary within with other people where you're just like, um, you know, I, you know, I don't talk to people until, you know, cause 10 o'clock at night is the time that I go to bed. So you can even start something very, very small and just start with a very small boundary. And then as you get comfortable with that little small boundary, then you can set something else that makes, that is a little bit, maybe a little bit more difficult. But since you've already started to set the tone, just consistently be starting to set these boundaries because it's going to make your dating life so much more easier. Yes. Yeah. I really like it. And I really liked how you're saying, you're going to see how that person is respecting yeah. and honoring your boundaries. Yes. Pretty, pretty quickly. Agreed. Right. Like, and if they're not, well, that's a really good indicator that, right? Yep.
That's right. right. How can I differentiate between chemistry and compatibility in a potential partner? Mm -hmm. That chemistry, Robin. <laughs> do, we need to, do we need to differentiate? Right. So, yes, um, yes. I mean, it's like, it's, yeah. yeah. So you can have high chemistry with somebody and zero compatibility. And mm -hmm. there could be the flip side of that where you are completely compatible with somebody but you just can't seem get to get, you just can't seem to get there. Compatibility stems from really, for me, it's your core values, understanding what those core values are and making sure that the, that person is in line with how you see the world, mm -hmm. um, how you live your life, um, where you see yourself going, where, you know, are they on the same page as you? So that is compatibility chemistry is all physical and it's the, the chemistry piece. I mean, yes, there's a little bit of a sparkle and a spark and whatnot that you could say that with compatibility, like that, that there, it could be a component of that. But really when we talk about chemistry, we're just talking about the physical aspects. And, um, I believe that being attracted to somebody can grow over time as long as the compatibility factors are there and you're starting to grow emotionally and you're and you're having more of an emotional connection with that person versus you can have extreme high chemistry for no apparent reason with somebody but i say sometimes when that happens that's actually the complete danger zone that you need to stay away from those extreme high chemistry relationships because how they get started is how they end and usually those types of relationships fizzle out very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. If there's no compatibility, that's right. there. Yeah. What are the best ways to handle rejection while dating, while still maintaining self-confidence? Mm -hmm. This one of the things we just talked about on the podcast yeah. was how important rejection is in dating. So, so this, is, this is a good one. It's a great one. Um, so what I would say if someone, if it was a client of mine that said that I would have them sit down and write down everything they have to offer someone, what are all, what are all of your, what's all your greatness? Like, tell me all the things like, I want to know, you know, what, you know, you're kind and you're empathetic and you're, you're a hard worker and you're driven and you are great in bed. I don't know. Right. So write down all of the things that you know, that you are great that you have so much of these things to offer mm -hmm. someone. And so when someone, you get rejected, think of the rejection, and we were, we were just talking about this, the rejection is not really, usually when rejection happens, it usually is after the first date or second date, right? Like rejection after six months, you know, from three months and, you know, six months, I mean, that does, that will, it can be difficult to move past that. So, but, when you're initially dating and, and someone rejects you and says, I just don't feel a spark or I'm just not feeling it or I just feel like we're better off as friends, you have to keep in mind that that person has an idea or whatever that imaginary partner that everybody has in their head. For some reason, you don't match yeah. who that, whatever that criteria is. And it's not your job to fit into their mold. It's your job to make sure you're just being that you're being true to who you are. You're not being a chameleon and you're not having to change yourself, being true to who you are and just bless and release. And I think going back to that list being like, this is, I know the right person is going to see that I have all of this to offer them. But so many people are, are so willing. I mean, especially in today's dating culture, people are so willing to move past, like not get past that first date. This is why I always, you know, you and I were talking about at least trying giving people three dates, but think of the rejection of as a redirection and being like, okay, great. Thank you. They can't see my greatness and that's okay. I know that every no brings me that much closer to the yes. Right. So, yeah. Um, so when I, before I met my partner, um, I had gone on like three different dates and the first person I reject, what happened? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. There was two, I rejected one and the other person rejected me. So, <laughs> but when I was rejected, this was like our third date. And I thought, oh, well, I'm curious about this person. I'm interested in this person. And he sat across from me and right there. And then um, during dinner, like said, 
I am just, as much as I'm trying to get there with you, I'm just not. And I, like, I'm not attracted to you. And, you know, you hear that and you're like, oh, righty then. Like, like, wow, right to the face. Like, just like, it was just such a clear no, right? And I walked away from, I walked back to my place from the restaurant and was like, well, thank you for letting me know. Like, you know, thank God, like that this, that he was clear enough. It kind of stung. But then it yeah. was like, also like, I wasn't that sad. Like I, you know, we could take it as we do, but it, right. I just felt like, I'm glad he told me. I don't yep. want to be with somebody that, that's totally not into me. Right? right? Yes. I mean, it was, it was a protection. That's how I looked at it. Yes. Redirection. Protection and redirection. Good. I love it, Robin. Yeah. So how can I create an online dating profile that truly reflects who I am? There are some mm. things that you can absolutely do to make your profile really great. And people, and this is, this is good. This right here is going to be solid advice, people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So the way that I want you to view this is your, your online dating profile is really your brand, right? Mm -hmm. So this, what we want to show the world are different facets of who we are as people. What would it look like? like to be a part of your life right so this isn't so just think of it in general like your like interests that. your hobbies what you love to do um things that like really light you up things that make you happy like what would it look like if i was to spend like a month in your life what would that look like what are the different things that you do where are the you know where do you hang out what do you do for fun etc cetera, etc cetera. so when we're creating because and it really comes down to photos, truly. I mean, the prompts are a part mm -hmm. of it, but really initially it comes down to photos. So if you want to look, if you want to create a profile that's authentically to who you are, you owe it to yourself to also have authentic photos. And what I mean by that is professional photos for sure, but also having photos of you living, living your life. Mm. So it's, it's one of those things in which like a lot of people are like, well, I don't really do much. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know what other photos to take. Then I think that that's an indicator that you need to pour more love into you, boo. Like you need to do oh, like more that. things yes. for you. Yes. So that if you're you just sitting on the couch every day and like, do it, like everything you by yourself all the time, um, that's probably not what your partner, your new partner would want. Like, right. what are you going to, how are you getting out in the world and just living life? Yes. Hmm. And there, um, you know, I, when, when I work with clients, we do professional photos for their profiles because people do a really bad job of presenting themselves to the world. And um, professional photos are a great way of being able to show yourself in a way, again, putting your best foot forward, showing the world. And there's, there's, and I'm not talking about your LinkedIn photo. I'm not talking <laughs> no, about not. The, photo, the photo shoot that you had with your business because those are different photos. I'm talking about true lifestyle, loving your life, super happy, vibrant photos, right? And if you don't know a photographer, look for one. Right. Just type in dating photograph, dating photo photographer. They're, they are all over the place. So Good that's tip. the first thing is that making sure that your photos are a true representation. So a headshot, a full body shot, and then another look to you. And then three other photos, one with friends. They've said that they used to say not to put photos with friends, but now they're saying that there's more evidence that people want to see that you have a life and that you have friends. <laughs> you want to add one with friends, yes. just one. And then two other ones of you loving your life. Mm -hmm. um, no children, try to keep pets out of it. No, like try to make it solely that the focus is all on you. Again, what would it look like to date you? I want to know what it looks like to date you. And then your prompts, put some, mm, put some effort into them. And yes. if you don't know how to answer your prompts, there's chat GBT. Go into chat GBT, type in what the prompts are, tell chat GBT, chat, chat GBT, say, Hey, I'm date. I'm a 30, whatever. These are my interests. These are the prompts. How would you answer these prompts if you were me? And chat GPT will tell you. So if you don't even know how to answer, go to chat GPT and you don't even have to exactly take that for verbatim, but it gives you at least it sparks some idea of being like, oh yeah, how do I want to answer these prompts? Because you want to make these prompts in which someone looks at that prompt and wants to answer that prompt or is curious of wanting to know 
more about that prompt. So right. yeah, we want to leave the generic ones like the pineapple on pizza and this is my love language. We want to keep those like make again, this is your brand. Like make yourself unique, make your make, make yourself stand out. Mm -hmm. And that includes photos along with prompts. So oh. yeah. Okay, I, 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 okay one other one other tip I, I think this is so important and maybe it's just the Virgo in me but spelling yeah. you you yeah. And, like, grammar grammar and yeah. spelling are so yeah. like it's like for me it, like it's such a turn it was such a turn off when you see people can't are not spelling properly or grammar and you know what chat GPT will help you with that yes um, but I really like this I really like what you said around what your profile should show what it would be like if that person was part of your life. Yes. That is just so great. I've never heard that said before. I just think that's brilliant. Really good. Yeah. And I think, I think you, yeah. want, you don't want to give reasons like to, to piggyback off of what you said about grammar and spelling. You don't want to give people reasons to say no to your profile. When you give them all the reasons to say yes. Yes. Good. All right. What are the best questions to ask when on my dating? So I think going into like you said, like we want to look at somebody's profile and be curious and ask some really good questions, right? Yes. So yes. what happens when you're just kind of, you, you, okay, you've already liked this, you like each other, yeah. you've made a connection like online, yeah. yep. you've, you've already mentioned a couple of things about their profile. Mm -hmm. What, what other kind of conversational things do you, you know, can you give people? So I have, you know, the, what, what you want, you want to ask questions about like stories, right? So marketing, right? When we're talking about branding, like you've got your profile and it's your brand and then you need a market, right? So marketing, the way that people connect through marketing is through stories. We don't connect through facts. So you will want to ask questions in which the other person will tell a story. And if the other person's telling a story, it brings up the emotional component. And so we feel more connected not like where'd you go to school well i went here how many mm -hmm. kids do you have well, i have this many kids it's like oh my gosh you have two children tell me uh, like what is the most funniest stories of your kids when they were toddlers right so like it's inquisitive and you're asking them questions about their life but you're wanting to know more of detail by asking them mm -hmm. tell you a story so that's a great way um, a flirty question that is always that I always um, tell people is ask people what their special talent is because you never know what people are going to say. <laughs> so that's yes. always a fun. You tell me, what you, is there a special talent you could share? I like it. Yeah. yeah. Um, make hmm. really make the conversation more about the other person. I think that's initially yeah. really like try to be more inquisitive. And then if somebody is asking you that question, hobbies, passions, interests, I want you to think about does this light me up? And is this a green light and green light meaning like, mm. am I pulling someone in? Is this something where like green light means go versus I'm going to talk about these super heavy things. So people go, well, let's just go ahead and just throw it all on the table and get it out of the way. That's a red no. light. Is this going to pull someone in or is this going to push someone away? Mm. So when you're asking these really inquisitive questions, you can ask them to tell stories. You can ask them more about their passions, their hobbies, their interests. You can ask them about particular stories from when they were children. You can ask, um, you know, you can even ask like questions where you're like, if we were, you know, if we both were on a mission to Mars, what would you take? You know, like interesting questions that are going to provoke more conversation that's not so like mechanical, but more emotional and con that will enhance connection. Mm, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. All right. Will I ever get over the fear of making the same mistakes in my next relationship? Oh boy. <laughs> but this I think is, okay. You talk about you, like, and I know your clients are coming with this, some are coming with this concern yes. because we all have a past. We all have baggage. And it's like, how do I not like fall into another relationship that is similar to what, what I just had? <laughs> if it was bad. <laughs> right. How do I have a kind of a clean slate and approach this, this new, you know, the way I am now with, um, with an open heart and just with, with just, yeah. <laughs> so really when I, what I hear with this question is that the person is questioning their own, their own um, ability to pick a partner right. for themselves. Right. So they don't trust themselves. Mm. 
Mm. And I think that the fear is going to be there. It's not going to go away because the only way that we can love is through vulnerability mm -hmm. and being vulnerable is a, it is a risk no matter what, but it's a risk worth taking. Right. And so if you took those learning lessons from, if you have this pattern and there is a substantial pattern that's happening with previous relationships, then the question is, is that what's the commonality of these certain, like, what was the thing that was very similar between all of these relationships that I've been in? And what did I learn from each one of those? And what can I change as far as my own vetting process moving forward? Right? So, and what I mean by that is sometimes we talk about chemistry and compatibility. People get so caught up in the chemistry that they have, that they're not willing to see the, the red flag the that are compatibility. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so if we know that there are certain things that we know to pattern, we know a pattern and we, we know hindsight is 2020 and we can look back and say to ourselves, okay, these are things that I know happened. These are things that you are going to look for. But the thing that is, is that when that thing appears, whatever that is, mm -hmm. then you have to, the way that you trust yourself is by making that decision. So right by changing that pattern and right. Yes. So the vulnerability is that I'm going to trust myself to know that I'm going to make the right decision, whether or not it's going to be yes for the relationship or no. Right. So if you get to that point where you see something and you trust the way that you're going to build trust within yourself is that you make that decision where you're like, you know what, this is not a good person for me and you walk away. Right. So that's how you start to really establish your own vetting ability and the own trust that you have within yourself. So that each time you build another connection, it gets you, that trust you have with you gets stronger and stronger. Yes. Oh, that is just really good, Kat. Really good. Ah, thanks, Ron. <laughs> All right. What What are some ways to date and meet people that don't involve using apps? Oh, in yeah. Real life. IRL. In real life. That's right. <laughs> well, so all the obvious, right? So. First off, there's lots of singles events that are near you. Google single events near me. So that's a great starting point, right? So singles events near me, um, because you know everybody that shows up to that is also single and is also hopefully open to mingle and they're all there with intent of wanting to meet somebody, right? So that's a great opportunity. Another way is to go to meetup. So meetup.com and eventbrite.com they're actually seeing an uptick in in-person events by like 43%. So more and more people are craving like in-person yeah. connection. And so go to eventbrite.com and enroll in something or go to an event or go to meetup.com and, and enroll in some type of group that coincides with your hobbies, your interests, your passions. And then also your local community college. Um, they've got classes all the time. You can uh, if you're interested in real estate, you could take a real estate class. I mean, there's so many opportunities to meet people in real life as you're filling your own cup, right? So there's, it's to me, it's a win-win, but the kicker the really not the kicker, but the thing that you really have to do is do the thing. And what I mean by that is go be around people in real life, but go meet those people as you're doing things in real life. So if you're going to go to a singles event, Say to yourself, I'm going to go and try to meet five new people tonight to perch yourself on a bar or to perch yourself in a, in a chair in the corner. Yes, you're going and doing and meeting people in real life, but are you really? Mm -hmm. And to just sit there and put all the pressure on that on someone else to approach you is not fair. So if right. you're someone who really wants to connect with people in real life, you have to put forth the effort to meet people in real life. Are you in the line at the Starbucks and you see somebody who's cute behind you? Strike up a conversation. Are you, you know, it doesn't matter. If you're open to the opportunity of meeting somebody in real life, you need to also put forth the effort to also connect with somebody. Yes. So just do it. Yes. I, I, I'm and just one reading. One more thing about that. Oh, sorry. Yes, it's not just about the people that you meet in real life. It's also about building your network expanding mm -hmm. your network, making it bigger. So it's not just about them, but they might know somebody who's single who'd be like, oh my gosh, you know what? I have this single friend who might be a really good fit for you. So to me, open yourself to experience.
experience, meet new people, and then allow yourself to say yes more to more opportunities. Yes, and when, when I was a matchmaker, that was one of the things that Rachel taught me right away was um, be, if you're looking for love, be your own matchmaker. Yes. Right? And exactly. when I was working as a matchmaker, I had clients and friends. So, you know, if I was getting my teeth cleaned, I'm asking my dental hygienist, legit, like, you must know a lot of single people. Like, how many guys are you like? <laughs> And then I would tell her about my single client or my friend is looking for love. And then we would just be like, all right, all right, let's put this, put this match together. I love it. And, and, and everywhere I went, I would ask somebody who they knew. Yeah. So like, I really think there's so much validity around asking for asking people around you, who do they know that's single? Could, do, would they could set you up on a date? Yes. Right? Absolutely. Right? If you want to do in real life, like that's a good way to do it. That's a great so, way. So yes. Well, Kat, our time oh, is up. I told you it goes by fast. It goes by so fast. Jeez. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time today oh, and sharing God, like God, all these insights you. and wisdom. I, I think it was, this was excellent and it's recorded. So you can pass it on people. Love for any, love if you, there's some really great tips here for finding, finding love. And um, we all love, we all love love. So thank you, Kat. Thank you, Robin. And thank you everybody that joined us today. Yes. Thanks guys. We'll see you soon. Okay. Lots of love, everyone. Bye-bye.